welcome to another counter build for fighting these terrifying Arch-Tempered Monsters. This time, I'm going to be showing you a build for fighting Arch-Tempered Lunastra. And this is one of my favorite builds in the game, honestly. Uh, maybe I should say it's one of my favorite defensive builds in the game. So you can see what we did there is I put down two barrel bombs, and she blew them up when she ran over. A little trick for starting the fight. You'll notice I'm playing solo. This is actually a build you don't have to use it solo if you don't want to. You can play in a group. But it works just as well if you're playing by yourself, which obviously by watching this, you can see that's kind of self-evident. The other thing I want to point out for people who don't like to watch the entire fight, uh, the build is always shown at the end of these videos. So you can jump ahead to the uh, to the end of the video if you want. Uh, if you want to support my video, obviously watch the whole thing. Uh, besides that, I always give out good tips for fighting when we're in the middle of these fights. So yeah, so the weapon you see here is the King Gold Exploder. It's a long shelling gun lance, level four long shelling, which is you know, uh, shelling have different levels to them. You want to make sure if you use a gun lance that it has high shelling. And the reason I like the long shelling gun lance is just because you can build to do as much damage as you can for shelling and kind of ignore the melee aspect of it as a gun lance and then put all your other points into defense. Okay, so you're maxing your shell damage and then you're maxing your defense. That's all you're doing. And you don't use any melee attacks at all, which is what you see right now on screen. I'm just shooting her over and over again. And I'm dealing 109 damage per shot, which by the way, to increase your shelling damage, you wanna make sure at the canteen, you're eating feline bombardier. You could eat feline insurance. If that pops up, you'll give yourself an extra life if you get feline insurance. That's one of those skills. Feline insurance shows up randomly if you're lucky. And if you see it, you could pop a voucher, eat, uh, you'll get that feline insurance. And then if you die, uh, it's basically like having an extra life. It's like having four lives, right? But otherwise, go for feline bombardier. It's going to make your shelling do about 10 damage more for the whole fight. And that's a lot of damage in the end. So we talked about food. Long shelling, uh, you can see I'm pointing the gun lance up a little higher. She's in the air. So you can actually shoot her while she's, she's in the air. And we have our two mantles, the rock steady mantle and the temporal mantle. So we're, we're getting as much use of these as we can before they die. Usually around the time that they're starting to die, I like to try and go for a mount on the monster. Uh, you don't want to mount the monster when the, uh, the mantles are real active uh, because you're going to be wasting them, right? So when you're mounted, you're not really dealing that much damage to them until they get knocked down. And the whole time, you're pretty safe. So right now, while the mantles are active, you want to get as much damage as you can in against this monster. And really what makes Arch Tempered Lunastra so difficult is her supernova. You know, she has a special supernova. It, uh, it does a decent amount of damage. It doesn't one-shot you. Well, basically, the Arch-Tempered one does uh, one-shot you. And what it's really doing, of course, is it's doing DOT damage, and you're stuck in this huge bubble, right? This huge wave. Here we are. We're near the end of the mantle, so I'm getting, I'm kind of getting in position for a uh, mounting attack, right? But yeah, as I was saying, Arch-Tempered Lunastra's, her, her uh, supernova is so deadly. The Arch-Tempered version, it is crazy deadly. You can try to counter it with the Stara Jerky. Honestly, the safest way to counter Arch-Tempered Lunastra's uh, supernova is to completely outspace it or to use your, uh, what do they call that? The Farcaster. Have your little, it's a little green cr cloud item, right? You consume it and it sends you back to camp. It comes out very fast. That's why it's so good. So. Temporal Mantle end ended, and we've gotten our mount on Lunastra. Now, the, the next thing I'm thinking about really is Arch-Tempered uh, Teostra. He shows up in this fight, and I'm thinking a lot about him because he likes to show up, and when he shows up and both your mantles are dead, uh, and you're just playing with your regular health, you're kind of like primed to really get your uh, butt kicked by him. I mean, he's Together, they're really strong. You're very likely going to lose a confrontation against both of them. So I've got him in the back of my mind. He's going to be showing up any minute. Uh, the mount is over. I'm going to go ahead and take this. Uh, am I going to take the mantle off? Yeah, I'm taking the mantle off. And then look what I'm doing, actually. I'm coming over to the mouth of the opening of this area, right? I'm kind of pulling off to the side. Am I? Am I what am I doing here? <laughs> oh, I see what I'm doing. I'm looking. I, I'm thinking about maybe trying to trigger her, her supernova early. You can do this by shooting a... Uh, flash pod, but I learned that it won't always trigger it. It's kind of interesting. I think she has to be far enough along in charging up toward the supernova in order for the flash pods to actually trigger it. All right, wasted the weaver and fire there. <laughs> I thought she would come running over, but she didn't. But here we are. Okay, so there's Arch Temper Teostra. He is in the fight now, and we're kind of further away from him, aren't we? We kind of ran off to the side. 
Uh, and look, he's just kind of like, okay, I'm going to walk over here. I'm going to ignore you. Okay, and, and he sees us here, so I'm like, oh, geez. So I'm, I'm going to get away from that, right? I'm, I'm backing away from her. I'm sheathing. And he, he's de-aggroed. He doesn't care about me. And this is really a trick for fighting Arch-Tempered Lunastra is just dealing with Arch-Tempered Teostra. Because I found in a lot of my fights, he screwed something up. You know, you, you're definitely going to lose a life to him if you try to fight him and Lunastra together. Another trick you can do is, you know, chill out around them. Especially if you still have your Temporal Mantle, you can chill out around them. Uh, try not to, to get hit. And when they use their combined supernova, just use your damn Farcaster and get very far away from them, right? And just wait it out at that point. So so kind of what's going on here is T Arch Temper Teostra, he's going to be in the fight. He's active for like, I don't know, what do you want to say, like three minutes? Just wait it out, man. Don't do anything too dangerous. And that's the same for what the way I'm playing right now. Both my mantles are gone. Uh, I've got a ton of defense already. And I'm just going to wait it out, honestly. I'm in no rush. And this is the trick to really soloing an arch-tempered mob. Not speedrunning. Obviously, if you speedrun, you need to be juggling them. You need to be running right through them. But if you're just if you're just trying to finish the monster by yourself, don't rush it. Right? We're only, um, what do you want to say? We're like almost uh, seven minutes in, probably. So I'm in no rush. So anytime I'm getting low on health, I'm thinking immediately about getting my health back up. That's because in order to survive Lunastra's... Ooh, she's really burning me down there. In order to survive her supernova, you really need to have your health bar be full. You also notice I do have vitality on this set. Some other skills I have on this set that's really helping us here. Y you'll notice the Basil Goose helmet and the Basil Goose coil. Those are giving me earplugs, and earplugs are really helping out against Lunastra. Because one of the things she likes to do, she likes to roar, and it actually staggers you while you're stuck inside of her, her area of effect attacks, right? Her AoE, her fire attacks. So you get stuck in those, and then she roars and it just really sucks right so we've got earplugs to make sure that can't happen we've got a lot of fire resist we've got vitality uh, everything you would want to have on a very defensive build so here she is we've got her into this center part of the map it's got two falling boulders we want to make sure we drop both of those boulders there's the supernova so i'm kind of already running away uh, and you can see look at my health bar it is just burning down so fast really going down but i ran outside of the area of effect and now I can heal up. Of course, you don't have to use a Mega Potion to heal that red bar up. You can actually eat one Astera Jerky. That'll do it as well. I just grabbed the Mega Potion because there it was. And we have our stones here. We're going to drop this pillar. There she goes. There's our knockdown. We also get the damage from the pillar. Don't forget about that. So we're going to go ahead and beat her up now while she's knocked over. Get that. This is all long shelling. Long shelling is where you hold down the shelling button, right? So there's a button to shell. You just hold that button down and it charges the shot up. She's roaring. We completely ignore the roar because we have earplugs five. We want to bring her over to the other falling pillar and get all the extra damage. There it is. And there she goes. Okay. It's a lot of damage, guys. It's a lot of damage. So now we're going to shoot her in the head. And uh, at this point in the fight, we're pretty well uh, We're pretty well set at this point. We haven't died yet. We have all our lives. Uh, there's Arch-Tempered Teostra again, causing trouble. <laughs> But look, he's going to leave. He's actually out of there. And the reason he left right away is because he's out of time. That's what happens. He's on a timer, so he gets a limited amount of time to screw up your match. And then he has to just go. So he finally caught up to us. But guess what? His timer was it was up. He was out of there. All right, we just got the knockdown on Arch-Tempered Lunastra. That, of course, happened because we dealt enough da uh, damage to her. So monsters have like an internal health bar. When you bring that health bar down, they will become knocked down. And uh, you, you only get to do that a few times per fight, so you got to really take advantage of it. Lucky for us, we were standing right next to her when she got knocked down, so we just shelled her the whole time. And we have got to be getting closer to the end of the fight, I imagine. She's probably going to leave this area soon. <laughs> we're standing in the flames there. All right, I'm a little nervous she's going to supernova again. What does she do? What does she do? Is she leaving? No, she's not leaving. But yeah, on the on the build, another thing you'll notice... Ooh, we're at half health. You always want to heal up from half health. I'm looking around. <laughs> Alright, I'm getting away from that. That's a max potion. You can add a max potion to your radial menu. You can also add crafting for max potions. But I learned you don't have to add crafting to max potions. Just add the actual uh, uh, option or button for consuming a max potion... And if you don't have any more in your inventory, but you have everything you need to craft it, you can just click on consume this and it'll craft one for you. It's very convenient. 
So you can actually shorten your, your radio menu up a little bit. I learned that a little while ago. Okay, she's moving on to the next area. And we're going to let her do that. <laughs> Grab this flower, heal up a little bit. Yeah, you want to be all healed up. I'm trying to figure out where she went there. There she is. So the area she flew off to has a, a geyser, or what do they call it, a uh, uh, lava spout, I think it's called in the game. I'm not sure if that's what it's called. But it's basically an environmental trap, damage uh, damage dealer, right? And you want to draw her on top of it so that when it erupts, she takes damage. It's like having the environment help you. It's essentially what it is. You know what I'm talking about. You guys have seen this before. A lot of people, when you're playing multiplayer, a lot of people don't take advantage of this. And I don't know why. It's just free damage, right? So we're going to run over here to the other side of it. We're going to set up our Mega Barrel Bombs. And when she runs over, she's going to set these off. Of course, she might blow them up before she comes in range. Oh, there's the eruption. You can see that it's actually grabbing her tail. Also, I have both mantles. The mantles are back. Here she goes. And there's the Mega Barrel Bombs. She is still taking damage from the Volcanic Spout. And we just got our Wyvern Fire off on her. Just tons of damage. That had to have been like 600, 700 damage at least. Maybe more. It's probably more like 1,000. And she's going to run off to her nest finally. So we're near the end of the fight. Yeah, we're near the end of the fight. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at that. So there's the nest off in... Oh, well, you didn't get a chance to see it. But I realized it would be faster to just fly over to camp. So we're going to do that instead. You don't want to go inside of the tent. Because if you go inside of the tent, you're going to your character will take the mantle off. The mantle is still active and I want to use it as much as I can. There she is. She's going to run down. We're going to go ahead and run down too. She sure, looks like most of the mantle will be gone by the time that fight starts. I could flash her out of the air if I wanted to. But honestly, we're going to take it the easy, the easiest path possible. We're going to go right for the wake up attack. That's just going to give us more damage. It's going to be safer, right? We don't care about time. Uh, if you were trying to go faster, you'd probably flash her out of the air. All right, she's going to come down over here. Go to sleep, Lunastra. How can you go to sleep right there with your adversary looking at you and putting down Mega Barrel Bombs? You'd have to be really dumb. <laughs> so here's the Wyvern Fire and a Mega Barrel Bomb Wake Up and a Part Break. So we got a nice knockdown. So yeah, a lot of things going for us right there. Knockdowns are really important. They give you a lot of free damage and you're safe to attack. Yep, really nice. All right, so she's got to be pretty close to dead. It looks like we really didn't get that much out of the Temporal Mantle. We might as well have just taken it off. All right, Rocksteady Mantle. Rocks, ooh, 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 what are we gonna do? Okay, I've got the Farcaster. Okay, very, very well. That's fine with me. So we Farcasted out of there. We didn't want to take any chances at all. Oh, I almost went into the tent, but I realized if I go into that tent, I'm going to lose out on the Rocksteady Mantle, and I don't wanna do that. So no, no taking the Rocksteady Mantle off. Also, another thing you could be doing that I'm not doing, I'm just kind of lazy. You could drink a cool drink. That'll help you. So cool drink will help here. Uh, but I don't really care. <laughs> She's almost dead. She's got to be real close because we got that really good wake up attack on her. Okay, there we go. There she is. She wants to beat us up. We're not going to let that happen. We have our flash pods equipped. You could probably flash her right now and she wouldn't use her... Her supernova, but I, I don't really care. I'm just going to go ahead and attack her. Come on. I'm being real careful. So even though you're near the end of the fight, you still don't want to mess up because you're near the end of the fight. Now would be a really sucky time to lose, right? Yeah, you got to be vigilant the whole time. I'm taking my time, blocking all her moves. Wait until I have an opening. When she roars like that, that's an easy opening, right? You get free shelling, and that's because of the uh, Basil Q's helmet. I don't gotta guard it, I don't gotta try and dodge it, I can just attack the whole time. So that's one of the legitimate times to take earplugs. I don't always use earplugs, there she goes. I don't always use earplugs, but this is one of the few fights where I think it's actually pretty good. Alright, she's down. We're gonna have to take a look at the build next, right? We wanna know... Look at that, there's the time on it. We wanna know uh, what this build was all about. Let's talk about it. So once again, King Gold Exploder. The augments are double health regen and a slot upgrade, right? That's giving me a small decoration slot. And let's go ahead and take a look at the skills. We have earplugs level 5. That's coming from the Basil Goose helmet and the Basil Goose coil. 
We have Health Boost, that's coming from the Empress Greaves and One Vitality Decoration. We have Fire Resistance, we're just putting that into the build. Focus is coming from the Damascus Mail and the Diablos Nero Braces. Uh, Artillery is the Charm. I do the Charm for you guys to make it easy. Uh, Divine Blessing all it, Divine Blessing is all uh, uh, decorations. Fortify is a decoration. Capacity Boost and Guard Up are also decorations. You don't really need the Guard Up that much. And then for the Capacity Boost, it would be nice if you had Capacity Boost. If you don't have it, I'm still recommending this build. You'll have three shots instead of four shots in your gun lance. All right, well, that's everything I had to say. Let me know if this counter build helped you. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.